Well, good morning. I'm Shimia Fagan. I use she, her pronouns, and it is my honor to serve as Oregon's 28th Secretary of State. My mission as Oregon's Secretary of State is to build trust, to build trust between the people of Oregon and their state government so that our public services can make a positive difference in people's everyday lives. And as Oregon's chief auditor, I know that our audits division is one of the most powerful tools that we have to fulfill that mission by making sure that Oregon's limited public resources are making the biggest difference possible in the lives of Oregonians who need them most. Today, we're releasing an audit of the Oregon Broadband Office that examines how this agency can equitably and effectively use federal dollars to make sure every Oregonian is able to get online. <clears throat> now, when you think, sorry, <clears throat> sorry for my voice, I, as you, many of you probably heard me say, I coach youth basketball, so I am constantly, this time of year, uh, losing my voice a little bit, so thank you for bearing with me. Many of you may hear high-speed internet, and you might picture me Googling the women's college basketball rankings every week, and it's true, I do that for fun. But using the internet for fun is really not what brings us here today, although every Oregonian should also be able to use the internet for fun and Google women's college basketball rankings. But really, we're here because high-speed internet is a necessity. It is a necessity in 2023. Without it, kids will struggle in school. Adults will be disadvantaged in their careers. Small businesses can't expand and reach new customers. And our communities here in Oregon will fall behind. As part of the new federal infrastructure bill, which passed two years ago in 2021, Oregon may receive between, these are big numbers, between $400 million and a $1 billion over the course of the next several years to broaden access to broadband throughout our state. Well, this is a once in a generation opportunity to make sure that all Oregonians, all Oregonians are able to get online. It's an opportunity to close gaps that have developed in our state where some communities have access and others do not. Today's audit finds that the Oregon Broadband Office will likely be prepared to receive and facilitate incoming federal infrastructure grant awards, but the office will require more assistance and federal funding specifically earmarked for broadband grant administration. They're gonna need this to make sure that Oregon receives all the available grant money and disperses it to communities with the most critical needs first. So. Specifically, auditors found that the broadband office will need to focus additional efforts in strategic planning, work transparently with stakeholders, and remove barriers to broadband implementation. In total, our auditors make 10 recommendations <clears throat> that if implemented will increase the broadband office's ability to bring every Oregonian online and close the digital gaps that currently do divide our state. As Oregon's chief auditor, I will use the audits division to build trust, as I mentioned before, by holding our leaders accountable if they fail to address our most urgent problems. The critical work of our audits division provides state agencies with very valuable insight into how to improve outcomes for Oregonians. Today, we're talking about access to vital technologies. In other audits, we've talked about housing, education, drug abuse prevention, and other priorities for Oregonians. The audits I've conducted continue to provide valuable information for legislators that they can use to improve outcomes for all Oregonians, and we expect them to lead to action. So with that, I'd like to introduce Kip Memet, the director of the Oregon Audits Division. Good morning, everybody. My name, as the secretary said, Kip Mehmet. I'm the audit director for Secretary of State. Pronouns are he and his. And I want to just thank the secretary, as always, for her great comments and, and support of this audit work we're doing here. Uh, and also thank member me of the media. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy days to cover and put a spotlight on, on this work that we've done and helping get the word out of hopefully how we can uh, address what the secretary has always set up here, this very um, important topic of, of Oregon's digital divide. I mean, that is a real uh, issue. In fact, uh, one of the interesting, you know, kind of snippets from the audit is of the uh, of the lowest 20 percent of income uh, earners in the state, 50 percent of those households don't have broadband access where 
Conversely, 95% of the folks in the 20s, highest income, uh, do have access to broadband. And as the secretary noted, and as we all know, um, you can't really function in everyday life nowadays without broadband access. The audit does a great job of highlighting different ways that the broadband is used for health services, education, public safety, accessing government services. So we really try to you know, make it um, really clear as to why this is so important. I want to note, and before I turn it over to uh, Ben for Q&A and recognize the team as well, that uh, Broadband um, Office has been doing a great job. They're working, as we noted, Oregon's off to a slow start. That's pretty much what the, what the report says. Uh, but, but both the legislature and the, the department have taken action. We're staffing up. We're getting there. But we are behind. And we've had some um, significant consequences because of that. But I do want to kind of put that positive push out to the public that, you know, we're still in progress. There's more investment coming both by the state and, as the secretary mentioned, in the federal space as well. So we have a real opportunity here. And so we're excited about this. And in, in my closing comment here of thanking and recognizing the agency and their personnel, uh, leadership and personnel for cooperating and, 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 and helping us out with this audit is that and agreeing with all of our recommendations is that we really do feel uh, really uh, confident that we're going to be able to make strides here as a state, but there's a lot of work to do. Let me introduce and thank the audit team. Uh, it was uh, included Teresa, Teresa Furnish, who is our uh, deputy director, uh, Erica Ungern, who was the audit manager, Matt Owens, the audit lead, Sheila Faulkner, and Jeff Watson staffed the audit. And uh, now I'll turn it back over to you, Ben, for some Q&A. And again, thank you for your attention on this report.